Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here, and you're an idiot <laughs> and a scammer. And I want to welcome you to our second, our number two edition of our point counterpoint, where Roz, brother Roz, determines whether or not I'm an idiot as well as a scammer. So without further ado, let me bring in Brother Roz. Brother Roz, Roz, how you doing, man? I'm doing well. How are you doing this evening? You know, I heard that you had some problems getting out of Philly today. And I, well, as soon as you said, I got to get out of Philly, I was thinking of Escape from New York. That's, that's what it's like. Uh, that that's exa- that was the image in my head. I'm like, oh my God, I hope we can get out safely. See, I can talk I can talk bad about you Eagles fans now because I, I don't have to wear that fucking hat no more. <laughs> that hat, ha <laughs> ha, it's done. It's over with. And you got your fly, Eagles fly. So you got bonus. So I don't hear no more of this bullshit that he's a welch for the bet. You got bonus time, okay? Now take it and, and shut the F up, okay? All right, so Brother Ross. Last Wait, week, did you sing Fly Eagles Fly? Yes, actually, I put it to the end. I did. I, I I don't know the word. That's the only part I know was Fly Eagles Fly. Oh, I, I, well, I just, I might have I might have missed that. I did, I did the little wing action thing, too, for them, okay? So they got bonus. They got a little But bonus. you didn't sing Jerry Jones' Happy Birthday. That, see, here, there's a misconception here because, see, Philly's a dingbat. First of all, what does me singing Happy Birthday to Jerry Jones do for Eagles Nation? I actually did sing it in one of the videos, but seriously, see, this is where you're an idiot. Why don't you do something like say, you have to sing fly equals fly. That's more meaningful than me singing happy birthday to Jared Jones. Wouldn't you think? I mean, that's what I would think entirely. If you can't see anything bad about the Eagles and then you have to sing the song on top of it, that would be brutal. Well, right. That's what I'm saying. That's where you, you, you're you're not real bright, Philly. You, you had your opportunity. You had your opportunity, so it's done. And and you know, Eagle fans. Oh, well, you can't see that. Okay. Well, listen. I, I actually tried today driving, and I was wearing the hat so you could see it, and I ran a red light because you got in order to see it, it's got to uh... be down here like this. And I literally went through a red light, and Mike's like, "You went through a red light." I'm like, "Oh shit, yeah." Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did you curve the bill? Did I curve the bill? Did you, you curve? curve the, you know how you can kind of curve it? Yeah. Did you I shape the... Man, I didn't want to touch the damn thing any more than I had to. Okay. Well, because in Philly, you got to wear a flat across. And why? Well, that's... I didn't curve it. I'm just telling you how they do it down there. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I don't care how they do it down there. Okay. <laughs> I feel bad that you got to go there every week and, and, and deal with those crazy mother humps. It's hard enough for me to deal with the you know comments on here and stuff and on the the, the live streams. You know, it, it's it, it literally makes my hair stand up on edge. Just think, you see my hair standing up on edge right now. Just thinking about the Eagles. Every time I stop in for my coffee before I roll out, though, yeah, at the look at the Wawa, that's the local gas station thing. Mm-hmm. You know, getting to go in and say hi and fist bump with the uh, police officer that stands there 24 hours a day. Mm-hmm. You know, it's always a nice thing to say hi. Yeah, because they got to have a they got to have a cop or a security guard inside the inside the gas station. Well, yeah, that's Philly. Oh, well, listen, it's got some now. When I go to Home Depot and buy some wire, they take it to the register, and that's everywhere you go. So you know, people are stealing shit these days. All right, are you ready to find out or prove that I'm an idiot or not? You're oh, an idiot oh, I'm <laughs> and a so scammer. Ready today. All right, so I, I'm going to start out a little easy first off before we get to the big ones. Jonathan Haskins could be the missing piece or the missing thing that the Dallas Cowboys need for their defense. Because Hankins, I keep saying Haskins, but it's Hankins, Hankins, okay? It's my damn dyslexia, okay? Forgive me. Hankins, who is a run stopper, is as good as just about everybody on the Dallas Cowboys defense at stopping the run, and that is the Achilles heel for the Cowboys. When I look at the San Francisco 49er game, which I hate to keep referring back to it, where we gave up 169 yards on the ground, oh, my God, and only rushed for 77, 
that's one of the major downfalls, that penalties and we couldn't run the ball. Am I an idiot for believing that? Mark? Mm-hmm. I cannot agree at all in any way, in any fashion whatsoever. It doesn't matter how you spin it. Bottom line is this guy has played one, two years and couldn't find his way onto the field. Now, is he a good rotational piece? Is he a good depth piece if somebody goes down? Sure, fine. Anybody who can play the game is playing the game better than I'm playing it right now. But just because they can play better than I can play doesn't mean that they're going to make your defense better. Wait a minute. Before I become an idiot, didn't, weren't you the one that said that he's graded as a run stopper better than everybody but Tristan Hill on the Dallas Cowboys defensive line? Oh, no. I wouldn't have said that. I would have said he was graded as a good run stopper. As in, you know, remember we have that scale – we have poor, average, good, great, elite. He's in the good range, only run stopping, which means he, if you put him on the yeah, field. That's like Jordan Davis. You know, Jordan Davis is the, you know, is a, a two down guy. Isn't he an eagle? I, he is an eagle. I'm just saying that you have, uh, well, with the Dallas Cowboys defense, because they have so many different pieces, you know, sometimes. You need a monkey wrench, okay? Sometimes you need a pair of needle nose pliers, right? You can't. So have let me one ask you a quick doesn't. question. You, you sometimes have to have a specialty tool to get the job done. And if the Cowboys can say, we're going to be going against a run heavy team like the Eagles or the Giants, we have a, another big body to put in there. So, all right. All right. So, all right. Say, so I am an idiot. You're an idiot. Let me ask you one last schema. question okay. on that. So your argument that he's the missing piece is that if you go against the Eagles again and they go run heavy in that game, over 50% run the game, mm -hmm. that he's going to do better than the defense you put on the field already? And he will supplement the defense. Supplement rotational, yes. That's I can't argue with that. You're smart. You're smart. But missing piece? I mean, it, or, or, okay. That is. Are we allowed to say, come on, man? man? Let, let me say this because, see, we have a sack getter, Micah Parsons, okay? Micah Parsons is so good. You know how good Micah Parsons is? I know he's, I know he's got a sack. Uh, well, well, I, I tell you what, he got a sack on his off day. He wasn't even playing football and he got another sack today. You, am I lying? They turned around and said, oh, we credit Dorrance Armstrong with the sack that was really Micah Parsons. Micah, here's a sack for you. Boom. I, don't, I didn't make it up. Okay. We've got the sack guys, okay? We got Dorrance Armstrong, who's now got five instead of six. We got my man right there with eight. You know, we've got, um, 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 you know, Dante Fowler with three. We got Dela. You know, we're, we're five sacks ahead of everybody else. But the one thing you look at, I mean, our, our D-backs are doing pretty good. We're getting takeaways and things, right? We're getting the strip sack fumbles. The place that you look at where teams you have extra D-bags, yeah, um, is against the run. That's the, 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 the only part of the defense that you look at and say, boy, if they can really shut down the run, that really could be lights out. We're going to have to disagree. I mean, we're going to have to agree to disagree okay. because so what point, I see him do is idiot. rotate in and a give somebody a breather okay. and not choke. That's it. I, I see him not choking, but I, I don't. I don't think you're going to hear his name called. Is what I'm saying. Like nobody's going to say, "Oh my gosh." But typically. You don't hear interior defensive linemen's name called. You just don't. Their numbers aren't huge. Chris Jones, Frank Clark, um, 
We used to have a couple dudes back in Green Bay. Um, okay, okay, all right. We'll, we'll, we'll move on. We'll move on. All right, so <laughs> while you were leaving Philadelphia, okay, and I'm happy you escaped alive, um, the Eagles had traded for Robert Quinn. They gave up a fourth-round pick. The Cowboys actually got Robert Quinn from Miami uh, in 2018, I believe it was, and we used a sixth-round pick that I think we swapped with the seventh. Maybe I'm wrong. To get him, coming off of a six-sack season, he ended up having 11 and a half sacks. We let him go in free agency, got ourselves a compensatory pick, and he signed a $75 million deal with the Chicago Bears. The first year there, he had two sacks. Last year, he had a monster season of 18 and a half. Looking at the numbers from him, he is good one season and then kind of down low and it seems like he is up and down without a lot of consistency so looking at the season thus far with the bears he's got one sack he's going to probably have the same effect as say hankins he that he's not going to be that <laughs> much of a okay because here's the thing with the eagles i thought the eagles were already stacked everywhere on the defense that they are the the best defense you know i mean they're, they're batman they're batman out there and they got a whole team of batman so why did they right. robert quinn robert quinn's not going to be that effective that 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 good all right so here's okay so I love how you do this, Mark. This is great. You okay. you put you put two things together to get me to have to agree and disagree on every damn one of these. Okay. Okay. So first things first. Okay. No, you you done lost your mind if you think that he is going to have the same effect there <laughs> as your backup run stopper. You're an idiot. Okay. Just and it's a over. scammer. Done. I ain't even going to talk about that, okay? The difference because he is your he is there, Dorrance Armstrong. Okay. Okay. Josh Sweat is a beast on that line. Barnett is a beast on that line. Okay. This guy is going to rotate in. He's the Gregory Rousseau, okay. the Epinesa. Let, 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 let me rephrase uh, this and maybe using. Haskins effect on theirs. And they're going to call his name. Now, because the Eagles think that they have Von Miller type of production coming. That is psychotic. Okay. What they're getting is they're getting a guy who's quit on football this year. Mm -hmm. He's playing the game, going through the motions. He's getting the worst grades across the board because, well, he don't want to play in Chicago. Nobody want to play in Chicago. Okay. But they play pretty and What happens time. now is he goes to Philly. He's going to step up his game, but he's wasted seven weeks. And once you develop bad habits, it no, takes you at least a couple weeks to get out of it. Okay. So what I would tell you is this. He is the same as your run stuffer for the next two weeks. Mm, okay. I, I'm beginning to think this lamp behind me is like I'm, I'm in a haunted house or something. Yeah, see, I've been flashing my light trying to talk to your ghost. I'm just you know, <laughs> it's, I'm in the hotel. The ghost is zooming. Head. Okay. All right. Mm. And, and I noticed you you got the lights down low. I hope I'm not disturbing any, you know, bow chicka bow wow time or anything like that. No, the rabbit's asleep. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah. And you know, it did. We don't do that up here. Okay. Maybe this is should. man cave. Maybe you should. He look. That's my boy. We the only two dudes in the house. Okay. <laughs> this is man cave. All right. The Giants at five and one have found ways to win. But I don't believe that they are really that good. My gut reaction is paper champion. Mm -hmm. 
they have the pieces. Their pieces, though, are exceeding all expectations to this point, which means the minute those pieces fail, one piece, it's a domino effect. Mm -hmm. And it's just going to spiral out of control and they're going to blow up just like you say. Well, who would have thought that Seattle... That you were smart? Uh, yeah, there you go. Who you got one. Seattle versus the Giants would be much watch game. If you said that in the beginning of the season, like Russell Wilson is gone, who, who's going to be starting for quarterback out there? That team's rebuilding. And Daniel Jones, you know, Barkley will be hurt by this time. All of a sudden here, you got... What, 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 what? I told you, look, you you refused to let me draft Barkley in the fantasy leagues. I told you he was going to be good this league. year. I don't want the Giants. I know you don't want the Giants. Listen. It, it, but I told you, I, my, the point is, I told you Barkley would be fine. For a Giant, an Eagle, or a Washington Commanders player. Just I get that. I get that. Old, but listen, the I'm fact old, of the matter I is, is you were told. I watched the Doomsday defense going against the Over the Hill gang and how they hated each other. How would it have been like if there had been fantasy football back Oh, you want to talk about a defense. Sonny Jurgensen. I'll talk about the best defense in like 30 years. Okay, now we're gonna to get to that. We're gonna to get to that. So, you're 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 agreeing with me that the Giants are overrated, and I'm not an idiot. You got that. You got that one. All right. Let's dig a little bit deeper. Now it might be. Now it might be after the buy before we see something. You know what I mean? They might squeak out another one. Or is there buy now? No, we got no. They're playing. Yeah. Okay, this year, at the end of the season, the seasons will be so bad for Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers, they will both just say, I'm sick of this shit, and they're out. Aaron Rodgers, the way he's going now and telling the coach basically who should and should not play, the amount of money that he's being paid, chasing Devonte adams it seems like the diva has gotten extra diva e on the team and i'm not sure that they're going to be able to coexist if this season continues to spiral out of control look um, when he of course does not look like he's having any fun anymore and i think i heard a final ultimatum from giselle of football or family as opposed to the NFL having football is family whole. Look, let's be real. Giselle already gone Jezebel. All right. Okay. Let's and just until I see her on the cover of, you know, or TMZ or something. Did I say cover of? Until I see a TMZ with her dating, you know, uh, somebody. Have you yeah. seen the latest uh, National Enquirer? No. Inquiring minds want to know. Okay. All right. Um, But no. Here you go again with a double double. So look, Tom Brady, dude's done. Even if physically he can still handle it, mm -hmm. his mind, it's not that his mind is broken. What you're seeing is the fact that he's realizing that he doesn't need the game anymore. He's fighting to survive on a team that is just. It's just a bunch of dudes, really good dudes that can't play together. That are old. Now, I, that are old. I said yes. that. There was a problem. Tampa Bay was the oldest team in the NFL. And wait, wait, wait. You I, said something else, too. I also will say that he really misses having Gronk. No, no. What Try I, again. You said what? something else. I believe you said, well, Tampa Bay was our only real tough loss. No, I didn't say that. I didn't say yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But see, Tampa Bay. When you was counting it, I beat okay, we beat the now, Super Bowl champion. I'm gonna go into this now. If you if you want to throw yeah, stuff we'll at me and tell me that I'm literally You're an idiot <laughs> and a scammer. Hey, I heard there was this video uh, I saw on his Stan channel that I'm just saying. Okay. Uh what I will say about the first game is um we've seen Aaron Rodgers get lit up first game of the season like the year before. 
against New yes. Orleans in Miami because New Orleans couldn't play at home. You know, they literally were flooded out. And they got jacked up. And then in Jacksonville, yeah. In Jacksonville. And and they end up, you know, he's MVP. Um the first month of September, it's hard to judge teams where they are because we all know and we've had discussions about this. There is no preseason. There is no hitting. Okay. And for the Cowboys, none of our starters ever played. We were rusty as could be. I'll be, I mean, I, and I'm not making excuses. I'm just saying that the, we, we were. We were out without our left tackle. We still didn't have Michael Gallup. And we we're playing against Tampa Bay, who was actually, Tom Brady actually played preseason. He actually had a full complement of all his receivers. He actually had Julio Jones for his one game. He had Chris Godwin, although he was coming back from the knee injury, and he had Mike Evans fully healthy. And, you know, you walked into a bus saw with a good team. And since then, they got injured. Their older players aren't showing up. And now Mike I, Evans. I, I hate to say, I hate to say, now you also have to look at the coaching of Todd Bowles. Is Todd Bowles the right guy? Mark, Mike Evans, and I, I wish I had the quote person, mm -hmm. but there's an actual reporter, Mike Evans, and I believe it might have even been a press conference after the game, mm -hmm. but the reporter asked him, he said, how, how did the team respond after you dropped that long touchdown, what would have been a touchdown? Mm -hmm. Third play of the game, and Mike Evans said, you could tell that the entire team just gave up. Wow. It's when you got Mike Evans saying that he can see that from his own team and Tom Brady can't bring that back, yeah. Brady's yeah. done. Right. I, I okay. mean, it's, it's pretty telling that Cole Beasley finally got a gig to work with the GOAT and decided, nah, I'm out of yep. here. That, that's when you look at it and say, something ain't right here. Something that, hey. you know, I, he could have been. Hey, I'm going to give you a welker. What? Hold on. Breaking rumor. What? Okay, I'm going to give you something that I that you ain't going to find anywhere. Da -da -da, da -da -da. Unfortunately, it's going to take a couple hours to upload this, but go ahead. All right, well, you're not, no, it, you're not going to hear it, okay? Okay. But okay. Jameis Winston is not going to play, he won't start. Okay, he's fully healthy. He's reported as fully healthy. He's won't he will not start. Okay. Michael Thomas and Jarvis Landry won't play unless Jameis Winston plays. Why? What's going on there? Because hold on, Mark. They had the same thing happen where a dude got picked up by the team mm -hmm. before the season and retired before the first game. Okay. I'm just telling you, keep an eye on that situation. All right, we'll keep an eye on. Okay. Because remember, Sean Payton left there. Mm -hmm. Something going on down there. Sean Payton, Look. of course, uh, you know, I, I know Carolina Panthers are thinking that let's do this thing now so we get Sean Payton. But Sean Payton basically has let it known that he wants to go to a situation where he can win now. And you can yeah. look at it and say, he got off. Old dudes don't want to rebuild. Because. He looked at it and said, I don't have a, a franchise quarterback and don't have a way of getting one right now. It's like old dudes trying to rebuild a house. All you got to listen to is their creaking knees and stuff. Why you got to be talking about my knees, man? Oh, well, no, no, I wasn't referring to you. I was just saying that do, kind of thing. What you have to do is watch on my other channel and you'll hear my, you'll, you'll see this old man out here, you know, trying to dig footers and put up bricks and all that and the aches and pains <laughs> and see, look. See, when you get to be my age, look, this is what I'm, I'm doing tonight, okay? Big Sponsored jar by and pickle juice, okay? Pickle juice for the cramps. The good news is, is right outside, I hear there's a Civil War cemetery, just in case. Yes, they can bury me right there, okay? Okay, moving right <laughs> along. Hey, real quick, we're going to bury Brady. Mm-hmm. Rodgers might have one more year, but I'll tell you this right now. When Hackett gets fired after this loss, um, that might shake things up in Denver. Rodgers may have one more year if, if they can somehow still get him over there. Okay. 
but I don't know anything about that. I'm just talking about, I believe has, uh, you know, I, I, I believe there might be a rumor out there that says Hackett loses. He's toast. Okay. Mm. That's gonna be he might be staying in London forever. Mm -hmm. That's going to be interesting. Well, that could actually be, be a whole nother question here that um, <laughs> what's going to happen with Russell Wilson, but there's 250 million reasons why he's there in Denver. That is a situation that is just, I mean, you can't even take, that kind of a cap it. You know why he's in Denver? Look, I'm going to make it real simple. Two words. TV time. Mm -hmm. hey, TV, is that two words or itself, or is that television is one word? I do word? not want to see another Denver Bronco game this year. They are the ugliest. But that's what it's all about. For him, it, you want to talk about a diva and Rodgers? Mm -hmm. Sierra has made Russell Wilson the, the kind of diva where they him. have to come out. They have to come out and say, no, he's really hurt. Mm -hmm. If you got to explain it, that's because there's enough people talking about it that we know you're lying. OK. Yeah. And, and now he's done. A, now he's done this interview where he's talking about everybody else was sleeping on the flight over, but I spent half the flight doing high knees and, and up and down the aisle doing treatments and exercise stretching for, Oh, your hamstring. Good, man. Congratulations. All of a sudden. Mm -hmm. Anyways, moving on. We have yet to see the best Dallas Cowboys team yet. They will be peaking middle to the late part of the season. You can't argue with that. It's been pretty crappy so far. Oh, okay. Crappy. Too. Hey, look, there's only a couple teams in the league haven't even got over 250 yards passing. Okay. In a single game. Yes. Across seven weeks. Yes. But yet still find a way to win. But okay. If the offense can catch up to the defense then you've got to be improved because it can't get any worse. Okay. Offensively. All right. Oh, We're tell me your defense hasn't carried you through oh, seven yeah. games. Oh, my God, yes. Thank God we have. You know, and, and thank goodness for Cooper Rush doing what he did by, you know, not messing it up, making it worse. So I mean, that quarterback you had in the first game against Tampa, geez, don't even bring that dude on the field. Okay. All right. Here is the big one for tonight, where you really get a chance to say you're an idiot. You're an idiot <laughs> and a scammer. This Dallas Cowboys defense led by you're an idiot. Mark Mike Parsons could be the best defense that the Cowboys have ever had. Not a chance. Okay. And why is that? All right, so look, let me let me break it down for you, Bonnie Style. Picture this: a magical defense on a Cinderella story, tearing up people left and right. We're going to get interceptions. We're going to get sacks. We're going to we're going to shut you down, and we're going to keep your points under twenty. Mm -hmm. In the lowest scoring season of the highest offensive explosion we've seen ever 75 years uh -huh. this season is the worst yes now and wait 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 oh 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 but there's more not only is it the worst but it's only the worst for certain teams which means some teams are actually outperforming their Previous year, and other teams are underperforming the Bengals this year to this point. Well, so if you're keeping a bad team down who's bad, is it really you keeping them down, or do they just doing it to themselves with your help? Okay, well, for example, okay, let, let me before I get into it, um, was it a down year for the when the Lions scored 35 against the Eagles? 
for them. Have you seen the Lions the last couple weeks? Said, yeah, I did. I saw them last week with my team. Remember we talked at the said, beginning of the season when I said they're going to ride that emotional okay, high now, for a few now, weeks? But, but hold on. Okay. Now, I get what you're saying, that this is the lowest scoring season. But at the moment, here's what's interesting. Because I did, you know, I know you only go back 10 years. But see, I'm old enough that I've seen all the years, okay? The ones I now I'll be I'll be honest. I only go ten years for the stats, Mark. I don't. I remember the Cowboys losing to the Colts because I remember how my dad was upset about it. I don't actually remember the game, but I do remember us beating the Miami Dolphins. I do remember that. I was about six years old. But here's an interesting thing. Right now, well, that must not have been 1972 when you did that. Hmm. Uh, when you beat Miami, it must not have been 1972. I'm just saying. 71. Yeah. Yeah, we don't care about 71. Uh, of course you don't. It wasn't 72. It was 71. I was six years old. All right. Here's an interesting thing. And I get where you're saying that right now scoring, and you're projecting right now, mind you, because where we are right now scoring may not be where we are at the end of the year. Because I do believe that the Cowboys... Oh, no, no, no. I, I don't extrapolate, remember? Right, exactly. You don't extrapolate. So what I'm telling you is that your statistics right now mm -hmm. historically do not match up to the statistics okay. of the past. Now, now, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of the statistics back in the day. We don't know how many sacks the Doomsday defense had. All we have is the scoring. Now, one thing that we do know, hold on, one thing we do know is back in the day, because I remember when I was talking to Donnie Shell um, last year before the Hall of Fame, he was talking about the 48 interceptions that he had in his career. And he said, you have to understand, he said most teams, I mean, the teams were only averaging 12 passes a game. Scoring was truly low back then. Now, keeping that in mind, let's say, Right now, we're just as bad or worse than where we were back then in the 70s and stuff. Here's an interesting thing. Right now, the Cowboys are sitting at 14.9 points per game. I don't know what it's going to end up being, but if we, knowing that we're going to be playing some teams like the Texans with David Mills, uh, we're going to be playing the Colts with, oh, is that guy a rookie? Right? We're going to be playing. Sam Allinger. Yeah. We're going to be playing, you know, um, no, he's a he's Heineke. a second year guy, Heineke. but he's we're, never we're played. We're going to be playing Heineke, and I, and we all know that you know Washington uh, they, they have a love hate. You know that they're they're thinking that he's the answer. He's not the answer. Okay, we know how, he, he. You know they forgot about the first half that he had. The second half was better, but but be that as it may, we will play some teams that are really bad teams, and we're going to play you know Green Bay that may be on life support and really comes out and kicks our ass. We may be playing without Zeke Elliott possibly for six weeks, which means it's going to be harder to grind out and slow the game. I mean, excuse me, speed up the game. But if the Dallas Cowboys defense were able to reduce that 14.9, the best Dallas Cowboys defense, which is, what year was, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The 78 Dallas Cowboys that lost to the Steelers Average 13 points per game giving up. Right now, they're sitting in the fourth spot all time where the Cowboys have been in scoring defense. Right now, their defense is actually scoring, uh, allowing less points than the 93 Super Bowl teams. And you're falling asleep on them. Uh, no, 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 no. The, the statistics are awesome. Asleep. Because I love the are, statistics. They're awesome. I've been watching the ghost getting pissed off and flashing your lights even harder. Okay. Because the ghost agrees with me. <laughs> points don't define a defense. Okay. Wins and losses. Didn't you just say a minute ago but, when I said your defense is carrying you and yeah. you said wins? Okay. Well, I don't care how many points. We only care about wins. Let's be that clear. defines a right defense. Now, this season, there's no thank you to the offense. All thank you for those five wins of the defense. Which which is exactly what I had said a minute ago, which means in that case, by wins and loss definition, I agree. You're not an idiot. But your argument is the points, in which case, that's, that's the only hell thing. no. 
Well, here's the hell thing, no. though, and, and going back just to hell no. those. Just, those Super and they did here, that over a whole season. You've only done it for seven games. Okay, true. But when you look back at the 93, 92, 95 Dallas Cowboys or the Super Bowl teams of the 70s, they didn't lose their quarterback for six games. You know something else I remember about the old days? What's that? Now, mind you, the old days for me is the 80s. I didn't get the 70s football. Mm -hmm. I saw it, NFL films and stuff. I even have a few tapes if you ever want to watch VHS ones again. Okay. But uh, one thing I, the other thing I remember is that, yeah, they might have only thrown 12 passes in a game, but that defense had the chance to face off against some beefy, monstrous guys, yet they could literally beat him. Okay, I'll give you that. Argument. Bloody broken noses, twisted up face piece, you know, bull rings and stuff, and they're still out there but, playing. But uh, hold on, let me let me deflect. And 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 yeah, and like, and, you're say, telling, hold hold that, on, you you're telling me that you're telling me that the offense is going to win games back in those days. Hold on, hold on. You say beef? Those were killers on the I'm field. Old enough to remember when Dave Butts was a three hundred pound, and everybody was like, "Oh my God, you can't have people three hundred pounds playing football." Most of the players in the 70s were very, very small. I would have been at 260 I am, actually a very large NFL player during the 70s. But <laughs> so so you what you want to say is that because you would be a large player and all of them were roughly the same size, that that somehow is is consequential to what they did in their era. I don't know that if you had um, the players back then, you know, where you had. Um, we can't, we can't ever, you can't, you can't, you can't ever flip flop in the same way that you can't say that defense is this defense. You can say that this might be the best Dallas we've seen since the eighties, but you can't say ever because you mean the there 90s, was a time. The nineties, the eighties weren't, well, the eighties weren't good. Well, what I'm saying, though, is the 60s and 70s, before the merger and into the merger, guys were still trying to kill each other out there. Yes, and they did. Okay? That's a different kind of defense you will never see because that's not the product the NFL wants to put out, which they means they want to, they that you're never going to see that level of violence. Of they don't want the hmm? ramifications of it. They want to put that out. But they don't want to get the, the – Well, Yeah. Out. I mean, let's be real. You know, Munoz still has his busted finger, you know? Mm -hmm. um, right. Well, we have so, really gone way over here. So is the final verdict... You're an idiot <laughs> and a scammer. Am I an idiot? That last one? We need to revisit it in two weeks. No. Three weeks. You got a buy coming, don't you? Yeah, we do. You I beat will, Green Bay? I will dare say that this is actually going to be the roughest stretch for the Cowboys. We may end up not having Zeke Elliott, but we will, I mean, the Bears. It's four weeks. It's four weeks. Okay, you Bears, beat Green Bay. Uh, Jack and the Hyde Bears. The Bears actually look decent on Monday night and may have some momentum. Um, then you got Green Bay that could be playing, you know, for their playoff lives, caged animal. And then you've got Minnesota and then uh, the Giants, two teams that are more weak Here's we Here's what I'm saying, team. though. Here's, here's what I'm saying. If you beat Green Bay, yeah, because the only thing we have right now is we still have a, a young, fighting, aggressive defense. I, I sent you that graphic earlier. That is the only thing we have, which means if you can go in there, your offense is not going to win it. You're going to prove to me that that defense is the best. Okay. Without a doubt. Because you're going to shut down Aaron Rodgers and you're going to keep that our defense from doing anything significant that's going to win the game. Okay. Right? Our defense has not carried us. All right. Well, we'll see that. We beat them. In two weeks. Four. Okay. Well, brother. Green Bay is four weeks, right? Yeah. Oh no, we play. Okay, we we have the Bears this week, bye week, 
then we have Green Bay. Two weeks. Oh. Two All and right. Half weeks, I guess, because we're on hump day. You do that, and I will sit right here, and I will say, this is a damn best defense that we've seen in two decades. Okay. All right. With that being said, we've actually gone over quite a bit. I have no idea how long this is going to take to upload. It may end up taking an hour or two. Um, and so in which case. Yeah, yeah sorry about that. Oh, no, no, that's not you. Um, I'm on the road and the Wi-Fi is not as good as you would like. Um, but we'll see how it gets up there. We may have to actually premiere tomorrow um, if it ends up being there. But rest assured, this will hopefully be something we do on a regular. I appreciate you, Roz. I know you've had a long, rough day. And. Um, I'm glad the bunny Philadelphia animals, farm animals are all fed. But as always, we got to get up out of here. And we are going to end this with this one. If I can find out where the heck it is. This is for Tad Prescott. Leave me alone. This is for Cowboys fans. I wore your colors. Leave me alone in my mentions. This is for guys like Graziano. But most importantly, this is for my arch nemesis, Dominique Foxworth. Too bad I don't have the button. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got my face on television. <laughs>